Hey guys, let's check out this practice problem. So here we have this weird system made up of two small masses um, connected at the ends of a long rod. Um, two small masses means that these are going to be point masses and not rigid bodies or shapes, okay? They have mass of three kilograms, so I'm gonna write that M1 equals M2 because they're the same, the two sides. So I'm just gonna call it little m equals three kilograms. They're attached to the ends of a rod. Um, so the rod has a mass of five, so big M equals five kilograms, and length equals four meters. It's a long, thin rod. Um, I'm telling you the shape of, the, of this rigid body, and the equations, by the way, are here. I put it here for your reference, and we're gonna decide which one to use in just a second. It says the system is free to rotate about an axis perpendicular to the rod and through its center, and it's shown right here, okay? So imagine you have a rod, you got two little masses at, as sort of like caps at the ends, and you have a force pushing this way that's trying to do this, and you have a force up here that's also trying to get you to spin. So you got these two forces trying to do this to the thing, and it spins around its center, okay? That's what this description is about. It's perpendicular means 90 degrees, and if, you, if you're spinning like this, it means that your axis is an imaginary line like this, right? And you rotate around that line. So that's what the perpendicular there means through the center. There's two forces, they both have magnitude F and F, um, and we wanna know what value must, um, what must the value of F be to, and by the way, there's a word missing here, um, what value of F, uh, value of F be to get to get, let me write that again, to get the system, okay, to get the system from rest, in other words, the initial omega is zero, to 10 radians per second, final omega, 10 radians per second, in exactly eight complete revolutions, okay? So what must F be to make this happen? Now, exactly eight complete revolutions, uh, that's how many times you spin, which variable is that? I hope you figured out that this was, or this is, delta theta. Now, one revolution is two pi, right? 360 degrees, but we've got to do it in pi, in radians, so it's two pi, but we have eight revolutions, which means we're just gonna multiply this by eight. In other words, 16 pi radian is our omega, okay? Um, and I wanna know what is the force um, that I need to make this happen. So you might notice that there's some motion equations here. I'm asking about force. I gave you the moment of inertia, um, or at least the shape. Um, so how are we going to do this? It's a rotation problem. I'm asking for F. I hope you remember F may produce a torque, which may produce an acceleration. There's some change in omega here, so there's definitely an acceleration going on. So we're gonna use sum of all torques equals I alpha because it's a rotational, um, it's a force problem with rotation, so it's a torque problem, and we're gonna go like this. Um, I wanna point out that there are two torques, but they are identical. So what we can do is we can just say two, right, they're identical because they're both going in the same direction. They both cause rotation um, this way, which is positive because it's um, counterclockwise. And same thing with this guy, positive torque, okay? So what I can do is I can say two F R sine of theta, because there's two Fs, and then I have I and alpha. Now, there's two, uh, there's two parts to I. One, you have to figure out which one of these two equations to use, and then you also have to remember that there isn't just the rod, there's the rod plus the other two objects, okay? So the I is going to be a little bit complicated. I is going to be I rod plus the two moments of inertia of these two objects. This thing is in the middle, which means this is length over two, and this is length over two. They have the same mass, they are the same distance from the, from the center, so both of these guys will have the same moment of inertia. So if we want, we can do this, okay? Um, but just for, to be more expanded here, I'm gonna just call it I1 plus I2. All right, so which, let's do this real quick so that we can plug it in here and 
we're obviously trying to get our F out of there. So we have to start solving some of the other stuff on the other side. So which one of these two equations would you use? I hope you see right away that we're supposed to use the second one because this thing's spinning around its center. So this is going to be 1 over 12 big M L squared. These guys are point masses, so the equation for a moment of inertia of a point mass is mR squared. Uh, we're going to do that twice, mR squared. All right, um, I want to point out that R is half of L, so we can put that in here, plus m L over 2 squared, plus m L over 2 squared. Now, we can simplify and combine stuff, whatever, but what I want to do is I want to go ahead and start plugging in numbers here. So 1 over 12 big M is 5. The length, the entire length is 4 squared. Um, little m is 3. Length over 2 is 2 squared plus mass is 3. Length over 2 is 2 squared again, okay? And if you do this, you get, let's see, 16 times 5, so 5 times 16 over 12, plus this is 4 times 3, 12, and 12 plus 12, 24, okay? Uh, if we do this, you have, you can divide this by 4, becomes a 4, this becomes a 3, so I have 20 over 3, plus 24, this is uh, 30.7, yep, that matches, 30.7 kilograms meter squared. So that's my I, got that. Um, let's look at the rest of this equation real quick. R, R is the R vector for torque, which for these guys, it's this and this, and in this case, they are the same for both. R is L over 2. Okay? So, 2, F. The length is 4, so L over 2 is 2. The angle that the R vectors make with the forces is 90 degrees for both of them. So, the sine of 90 is 1. I is 30.7. And notice that we have everything except alpha. We're missing alpha, so we're going to have to find alpha. And alpha, we're going to find it using motion equation because we have a bunch of motion variables. Alpha is one of the five motion variables. So we're going to step aside here. Uh, this is us going here to find I, and this is us going over here to find alpha. Okay. Omega initial says up there is zero. Omega final is 10 alpha is what we're looking for delta theta we have it um, up here 16 pi right let's clean the mess up 16 pi and delta t we don't have it but we don't need it because we already have three variables that means the delta t is my ignored variable i'm going to use the only equation that doesn't have delta t which is the second equation omega final squared equals omega initial squared plus 2 alpha delta theta. Uh, this is 0. I'm looking for this. Actually, sorry, I'm looking for alpha. So let's move some stuff out of the way. Omega final squared divided by 2 and delta theta. Doing this so I can get the alpha chilling by itself. Alpha will be omega final squared. So 10 squared divided by 2 times 16 pi. All right, two times. And if you do this, it comes out to be roughly one. Uh, it rounds pretty nicely to one radians per second squared. Okay, that means this is a one, and we can just finish this thing up. So now I'm going to, sorry for the arrows, I'm going to continue here. I'm going to give it some sequence. Um, this is 4F equals 30.7, um, which means F is 30.7 divided by 4, which is roughly 7.7 .7 newtons. This means that if this is a 7.7 and this is a 7.7, .7, that this thing will rotate fast enough 
to get from 0 to 10 radians per second um, while completing exactly 8 revolutions, right? So sort of a, a elaborate question in terms of many parts, right, that you have to figure out. Uh, but hopefully you agree that it's not that bad. Um, it's just same old stuff where you get stuck here and you have to go find the answer somewhere else. All right. So that's it for this one. Hopefully you got it. Let me know if you have any questions. Let's keep going.